Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're going deep on something we all deal with at some point, uh, snoring. We're going to figure out what causes it when it's a real problem yeah. and how to make it stop. Yeah, it's kind of wild, right? So many people snore, but so few people actually understand what's going on. Exactly. It's like this mysterious nighttime noise that just happens. So let's just start with the basics. What exactly is snoring anyway? You know, at its simplest, it's really just the vibration of the tissues in your throat when you're sleeping and air is passing through. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when you see a flag waving super fast in the wind, that's basically what's happening in your airway. Okay, I get that. So does that mean the narrower the airway, the louder the snore? Like <laughs> trying to stuff a giant tuba through a tiny doorway? That's a pretty great way to put it. And you're right, certain things about your anatomy can make your airway narrower. Like if your tonsils are big or the wall between your nostrils is crooked, uh, that's called a, a deviated septum, by the way. And even just the way your mouth and throat are shaped can play a role. So some people are basically just born more likely to snore. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. But it's not the whole story. The things you do, like how you live, can also make you snore louder. You know, anything that makes those throat muscles more relaxed, uh, things like having a drink before bed or certain medications can make snoring worse. That makes sense. So it's kind of a mix of nature and nurture then. But when does snoring go from being a little annoying to actually being bad for you? That's a really important question. Some snoring is totally fine. But sometimes it can be a sign of a much bigger problem called sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. That's where you stop breathing for a bit while you're asleep, right? Right. And that's when things can get dangerous. If you have sleep apnea, you're not getting enough oxygen. And that can cause a whole bunch of other health problems in the long run. So what should people be looking out for? How can you tell if your snoring is maybe a sign of something more serious? Well, there are a few red flags. Like if your snoring is super loud, almost scary loud. And if you're feeling super tired during the day, even after you think you slept enough, and if you're gasping or choking in your sleep, if you notice any of that, or your partner does, it's definitely time to talk to a doctor. Okay, good to know. So we've figured out why people snore things like their body, the way they live, and even a bigger problem like sleep apnea. But what about solutions? How do we make it stop? Where do we even begin? That's where things get really interesting. There are actually a ton of things you can try to stop snoring, from simple changes to your everyday life to more serious medical stuff. Okay, I'm ready. What are some of the easiest things to try first? Well, one of the most effective and honestly often forgotten solutions is to just try sleeping in a different position. Wait, really? Just changing how I lie down can make a difference. It really can. When you sleep on your back, gravity pulls your tongue and the soft part at the back of your mouth back towards your throat. That makes it easier for them to block your airway. Sleeping on your side helps keep everything in place so you can breathe easier. So it's like strategic sleeping to snore less. I like that. Are there other easy things I can do? Of course. If you have a stuffy nose at night, dealing with that can make a huge difference. So those nighttime sniffles are more than just annoying. They could actually make me snore more. Exactly. If your nose is stuffed up, you're more likely to breathe through your mouth, and that leads to, you guessed it, more snoring. That makes total sense. So what's the best way to deal with that? Just use nasal spray. Well, it kind of depends on why your nose is stuffy. If it's allergies, you can try over-the-counter antihistamines or nasal sprays with corticosteroids. If it's a cold, those saline rinses can help clear out mucus. Oh, and a humidifier can help too. It adds moisture to the air and soothes your nose. Sounds like a whole plan of attack. <laughs> but what if all that easy stuff doesn't work? What else can we try to stop snoring? There are definitely other options. Things like those nasal strips and special mouthpieces can actually be super helpful for some people. Hold on, you mean those little strips you stick on your nose actually work? They really can. They gently pull your nostrils open, which makes more space for air to flow through your nose. And those mouthpieces, they're custom made to fit your mouth. And they help keep your jaw and tongue in the right spot so your airway stays open. Wow, it's crazy how much science goes into getting a good night's sleep. Mm. We mentioned those CPAP machines earlier, the ones with the masks. Are those only for people with serious sleep apnea? CPAP machines are definitely the main treatment for sleep apnea, but they can also help people who snore a lot even without apnea. So how do they work? Basically, the CPAP machine blows a constant stream of air through a mask that you wear when you're sleeping. It's like a little splint for your airway, keeping it open so you don't snore and you don't stop breathing. So it's like a gentle hug for your airway, making sure the air keeps flowing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to put it. It might take a little while to get used to, but for a lot of people, it totally changes how they sleep and how they feel overall. 
This is all super interesting, but I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to learn about how to stop snoring. You're right. We've laid the groundwork, but there's still a whole world of strategies and techniques to explore. We were talking about some of the first things you can try to stop snoring, like changing how you sleep and dealing with the stuffy nose. Yeah. It's crazy how those little changes can really make a difference. But what about people who just snore no matter what? What can they do besides those nasal strips and mouthpieces? Oh, there are more options for sure. For those really stubborn snorers, there are some techniques that can be super helpful that people don't always know about. Okay, I'm listening. What kind of techniques? Well, one thing that's becoming more and more popular is doing throat exercises. Throat exercises? Like for singing? Haha, <laughs> not exactly. These exercises are all about strengthening the muscles in your throat and the soft part at the back of your mouth. The idea is to make them stronger so they're less likely to vibrate and block your airway when you're sleeping. So it's like a workout for your airway. I've never heard of that. Yeah. What kind of exercises are we talking about? There are all kinds, but some easy ones are things like repeating vowel sounds or doing tongue stretches. You can even just hum for a few minutes every day. That sounds almost too easy to work. Is there any proof that it actually helps? Actually, yeah. There was a study in the Journal of Sleep Research that found that people who did these throat exercises regularly for three months snored a lot less often and not as loudly. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Seems like it's worth a shot, especially for people who want to try something more natural. Exactly. And the best part is these exercises are easy to do. You can do them anywhere and you don't need any special equipment. Speaking of natural stuff, we talked a little about lifestyle changes before. I'm curious to hear more about that. Yeah, making changes to how you live can make a huge difference when it comes to snoring. Like we said, anything that makes your throat muscles relax more can make you snore more. So no more drinks before bed. It's probably a good idea to cut back. Alcohol is a muscle relaxant, so that nightcap might help you relax. But it might also mean your partner gets a symphony of snores. Good point. What about weight? I always hear that losing weight can help with snoring. Is that true? Definitely. If you carry extra weight, especially around your neck, it puts pressure on your airway and makes it more likely to collapse when you're asleep. So it's not just about fitting into your genes. It's actually good for your sleep to be a healthy weight. You got it. Even losing a little bit of weight can make a big difference in your snoring. And it's not just about the number on the scale. It's about being healthy overall. Makes sense. It seems like a lot of these snoring solutions are connected. Taking care of your body can help you sleep better. And sleeping better can help you be healthier. It's like a good circle. Exactly. It's all about finding those little changes you can stick with that make a big difference over time. You know, we can't talk about snoring without talking about the person sleeping next to the snore. Snoring can really cause problems in relationships. Oh, absolutely. It's not just the person snoring who suffers. It's the person trying to sleep next to them. Exactly. So what advice do you have for couples dealing with this? How can they figure things out without losing sleep or getting on each other's nerves? The biggest thing is to talk to each other openly and honestly. It's important to be kind and understanding when you talk about it not blaming or getting angry. So no more snarky comments or elbowing each other in the ribs? Ha <laughs> ha, definitely not. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember that snoring is usually something people can't control. They might not even realize they're doing it. That's true. So instead of getting frustrated, you should work together to find solutions. That's the best way to do it. Work as a team to figure out what might be causing the snoring and try out some of the solutions we've been talking about. Sometimes something as simple as sleeping in a different position can make all the difference. That's really helpful advice. It seems like there's a bigger idea here, whether it's changing how you live, doing those throat exercises, or just talking to your partner, dealing with snoring is all about taking charge and trying to sleep better. You nailed it. It's about taking control of your sleep instead of letting snoring ruin it. This has been a really fascinating deep dive into snoring, but I feel like there's still more to talk about. You're absolutely right. We've covered a lot, but there are still some interesting things to explore. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've really dug deep into this whole snoring thing from how it works to all the different ways to try and stop it. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Who would have thought you could exercise your throat to sleep better, right? But before we finish up this deep dive, I want to go back to something we talked about earlier, that connection between snoring and how healthy you are overall. Oh, yeah, that's important. Snoring isn't just annoying. It could be a sign of a bigger problem, like sleep apnea. Right. And like we said, sleep apnea can be more than just feeling tired. 
it can actually increase your risk for some pretty serious health problems down the line. No kidding. Things like heart disease, high blood pressure, even a stroke. Those are nothing to mess with. Exactly. So making your snoring stop isn't just about getting a good night's sleep. It's about taking care of yourself in the long run, too. That makes sense. So it's not just about you getting a good night's sleep. It's about staying healthy overall. Exactly. It's about taking care of your health now to avoid problems later and realizing that even small changes can make a big difference. So if there's one thing you want our listeners to take away from this, what would it be? I think the biggest thing is to remember that you don't have to just live with snoring. There are things you can do. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I agree. Whether it's talking to your doctor, trying out some of those lifestyle changes we talked about, or even just talking honestly with your partner, there are definitely things you can do to get better sleep. And remember, even small changes can make a huge difference. It's all about finding what works for you and sticking with it so everyone can sleep better. That's great advice. Well, this has been a really eye-opening look at the world of snoring. We busted some myths found some surprising solutions, and hopefully helped our listeners take charge of their sleep and their health. It's been great diving deep with you. And to all our listeners out there, sweet dreams, and may your nights be quiet and peaceful.